Welcome to the Dark Souls speedrunning guide. In this episode, we'll take a look at how to use Steam's controller layout settings to rebind the inputs on our controller. You will want to do this at the bare minimum for a glitch called Prompt Swap, which is used in almost every category and consists of pressing the A button on our controller and the left click on the mouse at the same time. Using Steam Rebinds, we can set a button on our controller to send the mouse input. That way, all we need to do is press both buttons at the same time on the controller without having to reach for the mouse. You can also use this to completely customize your controls. For example, some runners rebind their sprint key to R1 instead of B. That way, they can hold sprint and keep their thumb on the right stick for controlling the camera without having to claw grip. You can use these settings however you please, but keep in mind that the leaderboard rules state that the rebinds need to be always one-to-one, -one, meaning that you can't set multiple inputs to one button, and rebinds also can only be analog to analog and digital to digital, meaning you can only bind buttons to other buttons and sticks to other sticks, but not a stick input to a button or vice versa. In order to access these settings, first you need to have your controller connected, and when you do, this icon will appear next to the cogwheel. If you're using a PlayStation controller and the icon doesn't appear, that's probably because you need to go to your Steam settings, your controller tab, and here you need to enable PlayStation controller support. Also, if you're using the Space War Crack version from my other video, remember that any changes need to be done to the Space War game on your library, because that's what Steam thinks you're actually running. When you go into this menu, you will have the official layout for Dark Souls selected, if you have the original game on Steam, and if you have the cracked version from my video, you will have said the regular gamepad template, as we explained on that video. If you don't, just select the regular gamepad and click apply layout. Once you have it, we want to edit it. So if you go into edit layout, you will see that all the rebinds here are the normal buttons, A is A, B is B, etc. Same for the D-pad, the triggers and the joysticks. For the purposes of this video, we will leave uh, the default layout as is, so you can play the game normally. Just know that you can make any changes you want here. And we will also add another action set for the prompt swap glitch. Action sets are different sets of rebinds that you can have stored on one layout and can be switched between them on the fly. To add a new one, simply go down to the, to the action sets menu and select add action set. Here you, we will call it just prompt swap and we will copy it from the default layout. This is because if you don't copy it, all the buttons will be not bound to anything and you would have to go one by one binding them. So instead of selecting none, we come here to this empty space. I don't know why Steam does this, but this empty space is the default layout. So you just copy it from that, click confirm. And now if, you, if we go back to the buttons, you can see that we have the default action set and then we have the prompt swap action set, which is just a copy of the default. Right now they are the same thing. In order to edit them, you go to the, you select the prompt swap action set and you switch the X button. You go to, you go here to mouse and you select left mouse click. That way when you are on the prompt swap action set and you click X, instead of the game receiving an X button, which would normally be the use item button, it will set a left mouse click. And that way you can perform the glitch. I will explain the glitch itself in another video, but I'm just using it as an example to show you how to use rebinds in the first place. When you have multiple action sets created, you will need a way to switch between them on the fly. What people usually do is use the select button or the back button to switch between them. Since in Dark Souls, this button is used for opening the gesture menu, which is not used at all ever in speedruns. So it's a dead button that we can use for something useful. To use this button to switch between profiles, you just go into it, select it, and you go into this action set tab and select change action set. Here you will just either set which action set you want to switch to, or just set it to next action set. You want to have the display name changed uh, ticked. This will show you a pop-up on your screen every time you switch between profiles. That way you can be sure which profile you're on. And then the beep is optional. I personally don't like it, but you can leave it on if you want. Now we need to do the same thing from the prop swap action set. We just go to the back button and we do the same thing. Change to the next one. Boom. That's it. 
Now, when we're in game, if we click the back button, we will be switching between default and prompt swap. Once we have a rebind set up, you can see on the main screen that it's showing both our action sets. And the next thing that we wanna do is save it so we don't lose it in case we have to re reinstall the game or something like that. So in order to save it, we go to the cogwheel, we select export layout, we give it a name that's recognizable. I'm just gonna call it video because it's just for the video and I'm gonna delete it later. Um, and save it as a new personal save, click confirm. And now you can see that your current layout is has the name that you gave it. And if we go back to the Dark Souls, uh, the regular Dark Souls layout and click apply, we have just the normal layout with no action sets and no nothing. But if we go into your layout, you will see the layout that you saved down here and you can just click it and apply layout. If we go back into it, you can see that I have mine saved. Like I have multiples of them. I should delete some of them. But yeah, you can save multiple layouts, each of them with multiple action sets. Mine, for example, has the prompt swap um, profile. And I also have another action set for the bonfire menu trick that I will also make a video on. But yeah, you can do anything you want. For example, I have my left stick click which in Dark Souls 1, it doesn't do anything. I have bound, I have it bound to be the same thing as the right stick click, so I can lock on with both of the joysticks. And with that, you are now completely ready to start your speedrunning journey. You now have access to the full game, all the tools that you'll need to learn and practice, and you know how to customize your controller layout to your preference. There is, however, one more thing that, while not necessary, you'll likely want to have by your side. A timing tool. In the next video, we'll take a look at what life split is, how it works, and how to utilize it to get the most out of it. See you there.